In this video, we're going to look at the relationship between a peak model and the figure of merit used to fit peaks to data. We've got on the component property page, there's a tick box that says use RMS. And when ticked, it'll use the RMS. And when unticked, it'll use a chi-square. So let's construct a peak model quickly on these data. We'll use a zero background. These are synthetic data that have been constructed using two peaks. So I know it is a zero background. And then I'm going to add two peaks because I know there are two peaks. If we select a GL30 and apply that to both of these component peaks, we then have a peak model consisting of two peaks, which we'd like to fit to a data envelope that we know is constructed from two peaks. And if I use the root mean square and say fit, I get a reasonable fit to the data. But if I use the chi-square for this particular set of data, and I press fit and these GL30 line shapes, I get something that looks really quite wrong. And we can see why this is the case if we look at the figure of merit used in the optimization. So we've got two different forms here. We've got the root mean square, which just relies on a data bin and the difference of that data bin from a synthetic envelope calculated at the energy for that data bin and the square of that. And we sum these and we try to minimize the RMS by various optimization algorithms. And that would give you one solution. The other solution is based on the chi-square, where you have the same difference as in the RMS, but the difference is this scaling value here, which is the standard deviation in the data bins. For XPS data that's pulse counted, you'd expect sigma to be the square root of the counts per bin. And therefore, if you have a peak maximum, you will find that you, you scale the peak maximum to a greater extent than if you have a low background where the scaling is low. So what you're trying to do is, is make a figure of merit that is independent of whether it's at a peak maximum or at a background. But as a consequence of that, you tend to underestimate the influence of the peak maximum at the expense of fitting to the background. Hence, you can see that a chi-square gave a rather unrealistic fit using GL30 line shapes to a pair of peaks that really should have been just two, and these two peaks should have been of equal size. So if we go to the peak model, and we look at these peaks, and let's go back to the result for the root mean square, you can see that it has indeed favored the peak maximum. So this is as you'd expect for a root mean square. If you do a chi-square, which is what it's currently set at, you can see that it's favored the background equally with the, with the peak maximum, and hence you get a completely different answer. Now this looks like optimization really doesn't work very well. However, there is one situation where it works really very well. And that is if rather than using GL30, which we know is not the line shape used in these data, we actually use the SGL50, which is the data. So we've got two line shapes now. Both of these are exactly the form that they ought to be. Let me just adjust this. So I've got a pair of peaks here. They don't even have to be that close, provided I use the correct line shape. And this is the very important point. The correct line shape will produce a very different result from an incorrect line shape, namely an almost exact answer. And it does it independently of whether you're using an RMS or a chi-square. As another example of how the line shape influences a peak fit, we'll have a look at just a single data envelope that is constructed from an SGL50. And the SGL50 is a linear combination of a Lorentzian and a Gaussian. So if I have two components, one of which is a Gaussian, the other a Lorentzian, 
When I say fit, I should get a perfect solution here. And you can see here from the chi-square that in numerical sense, this is a perfect solution. And you can see how the Lorentzian and the Gaussian both have the same peak maximum value. However, you can also see that the area for the same peak maximum is quite different. So that is one of the characteristics of how this legacy line shape is defined. Now, if rather than using a pure Gaussian, what I do is I just increment towards a Lorentzian just a small amount. So this is mostly a Gaussian. And this one is almost a Lorentzian if I define this parameter to be equally incremented towards a Gaussian from a Lorentzian. So we end up with a pair of peaks which we can then optimize and fit to these data. So first of all, we use a root mean square and you can see that we get a solution. The peak areas are, are very similar to the ones that we had when we used a pure Lorentzian and pure Gaussian, but you can clearly see there is a difference in terms of the peak height. There is a different solution here simply because we used a different line shape for each one of these components. Not quite the exact line shape for this data envelope, but if we go to the chi-square option, then we get a very different answer. And you can see how the ratio of the Lorentzian and the Gaussian have changed dramatically simply because we're using a scaling of the differences between the data and the, and the synthetic envelope using the chi-square.